may stand with me. How many of you know this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. If you know that God is good to you right now, give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, come on. Y'all can do better than any blessed folk in the house this morning. Anybody know that God is good this morning? Anybody have seen the presence of God in your life this morning? Oh, I will exalt the Lord. I will praise the Lord at all times. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you right now. And we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you for your power. And now, God, we invoke your presence in this place. For those that are here, Lord, we come to, to just, Lord, to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Now, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and reign as well as refresh us and revive our minds. We bless you, God, because you're so good. And while we're in corporate worship right now, Lord, we ask that, Lord, that if there's anything that is hindering us right now, that you remove it. But, Lord, I will, we will do like the psalmist says. We will bless the Lord at all times. And praises shall continuously be in our mouths. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. It's in the marvelous and mighty name of him who died. We do praise right now. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Can y'all praise the Lord with me this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Yeah. Let the glory of, let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise. Let it rise. Oh, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord Oh! 
an able God. Hallelujah. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. So if there's something that you need from him, hallelujah, make your request known and watch him show up and show out, hallelujah. Exceedingly abundantly above all all you could ask or think according to the power that worketh in you in you God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able. He's going to fulfill every promise. Don't give up on God, because he won't. He's able. what he said. He's gonna do it. Yes, he will. Don't give up on God.
Come on, put your hands together. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're gonna make it. The Lord's gonna see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. Keep on believing, you won't last always to be ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. I know you've been hurt. Inside. Let me encourage you, it's gonna be alright. Yeah. Troubles and trials, they come to make you strong. Yeah. Keep on believing, you gotta keep holding on. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle.
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God's got a blessing. Oh no, 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 no. God's got a blessing. Hey, hey, hey. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With my name. How many know it was because of Calvary that we have a right, hallelujah. We have a right, hallelujah. And we're able to receive the blessings that he has for us because he took his life on Calvary for you and me. On Calvary. Jesus died for you and me on Calvary. We were set free.
you know my name you know my name you know my name you know my name
Clap of praise. Come on and magnify him. If you glad he know your name, come on and give God some worship in here. Come on and give him praise. He woke you up this morning. He knew your name to call your name this morning. He started you on your way. He put food on your table. He knows your name. He knows your name. He knows your name. He knows your name. Heaven. Hey, God. Hey. Hey. Turn to your neighbor and say, he knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. My God. Hey, God. He knows my name. Lord, have mercy. He knew my name to wake me up this morning. That's enough for everybody to shout. My, my Lord God, have your way in here. I am not going to disrupt the spirit. Here we go. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now. My God. If you have your Bibles, while this train is still moving, you better catch up. My God, if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke, the 10th chapter, starting at the 38th verse. I fear God, and I am not going to be disobedient, set in pro call. Mm -mm. Lord have mercy. Luke 10th chapter, starting at the 38th verse. And it says... And Jesus and his disciples were on their way. He came to the village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted. Somebody say distracted. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked the Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work? left me to do the work by myself, tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Indeed, only one 
Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Turn to your neighbor and say, fatal distractions. My God, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord God, as we come before you. God, we feel your presence in this place. Now, God, I ask you to remove Edwina out the way, Lord God, and pour the anointing that you will have me to deliver to the people. God, we thank you and we give you glory and honor. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Turn to the other neighbor and say, fatal distractions. My Lord, here we go. Every day I drive the same route to and from work. And as I'm going to work, I see an alarming number of distracted drivers. Usually they are talking on the phone or texting. But I have also seen people put it on makeup, spanking the child in the back of the car, or feeding the baby while trying to remove maneuver a car at 70 miles per hour. In some circumstances, distractions are fleeting, harmless, and in, in a moving vehicle could cause bodily harm. As we see, there are major distractions that could be fatal to one's life. Uh -huh. Fatal distractions is nothing new under the sun. For you Bible scholars, we can start at Genesis, the third chapter. Satan provided the first distraction, the first fatal distraction to Eve, the mother of all mankind, right, and she fell right into his trap. Somebody say distractions. Fatal distractions are still ob obstacles people face today. In the book of Ephesians, Paul warns us to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Satan cannot attack us outright, so he will try to use any scheme and tact that he will. The reason why he cannot attack us outright, go back to the beginning of Luke 10 and Luke 10 and 19. It says, I have given you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Let me stop right there. And that's you wondering why you're having so many distractions. You wonder why things are gone. The devil already know that you have power. So why not aggravate something that I know that has power? Lord, have mercy. Therefore, he will use every trick in the book to pull a sneak attack and draw us away from the things of God. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, our enemy, our adversary, the devil, comes like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Uh-huh, for those Bible scholars that need another verse, turn over in John the 8th chapter, the 44th verse, says Satan is the deceiver, a liar, and the father of what? Lies. I stop by to tell you, fatal distractions have been going on since the Bible day. You need some witnesses? Go read in the book of Job. Who was Job described there? His wife told him to do what? Curse God and his friends didn't make it any better. So let me park my bus right there. That's why you better check your circle you hanging out with. Lord, have mercy. I can't get no help in here. But if you want to go on a little further, go in the book of Nehemiah. Uh -huh. There were three people that was trying to tell Nehemiah down. They were who? Sign ballot. Get your man who? Tobias. Lord, have mercy. Nothing but distractions. Distractions all around. If you're not careful, distractions will cause you to miss your blessing. Uh, Y'all don't want to talk. Like, I'll preach to myself. I understand what a distraction would do. A distraction would cause you to focus on the wrong thing. Lord, have mercy. Jeez, I'm trying to help you. Let's look at the text. Oftentimes, distractions are a hindrance in our relationship with God. In fact, this was the concern that Jesus had with his, for his friend Martha. She was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made for a meal. <laughs> look at the Bible and look at Luke 10, the 10th chapter, and look at that 40th verse. She complained about her sister's, Mary's lack of help. Let me just stop right there. Sometimes you don't need help. Sometimes you need to do things by yourself. You need to understand sometimes God called you to do it and not a crowd. Lord, have mercy. Jesus. So when Jesus, when she complained about her sister's lack of help, Jesus told her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but the one thing is needed, Mary has chosen. 
the good part, something that cannot be taken away. I come to tell you that you have to be very careful who's in your ear. You have to be very careful of what you're doing that somebody don't come to distract you. You ever been at work minding your own business? You could be listening to Hezekiah Walker. You could be looking, listening to Marvin Self. And here comes somebody say, child, let me tell you what they did down there. Nothing but a distractor. But I come to serve the devil's notice. We come to eliminate all these distractions. Honey, don't come with me with that mess. If you don't want to serve and be what you need to be for God, I will. For God, I live and for God, I'll die. So I tell you what, just remove yourself from me. Oh, have mercy. Martha's distractions were well-intentioned. Watch this. Martha was so bold. This is how the enemy will use you. Martha was so bold, she yelled at Jesus. Read the text. She got an attitude with Jesus. Don't you know when a distraction come, it'll come with a boldness and an attitude? If, the atti if Martha had an attitude and got with Jesus, what make you think the devil won't distract you? Mm. Mm. Martha's distractions. Here we go. But she was missing the opportunity to listen to Jesus and enjoy his presence. He is deserving of our deepest devotion, and alone he can he fully enable us to overcome any life destructions. Here we go. The first thing, eternal life is not gain in doing, but in receiving. Check this out. Martha was running around trying to clean up, trying to prepare us. Let me tell you, cleaning up, preparing won't get you into heaven. Lord, have mercy. I don't care how much good work you do. I don't care how many ministries you own. You can be on 15 minutes, but if your heart jacked up. Mm, Lord, have mercy. But if your heart jacked up and you're not doing it with a servant heart, you might as well sit down because I don't need your curses on my life. Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Oftentimes when people think that if I'm running around here doing all of this, here is where another distractor will come. I did this, and I got this together, and I done this, and I stayed up late, and I did this, and I fixed this, and I had to go and buy this. I come to tell you, you couldn't have bought anything if you didn't have the help of the Holy Spirit and Jesus to orchestrate it. Lord, have mercy. Jesus. What is your motive? Uh huh. What was Martha's motive? Uh huh. Fatal distraction. She got so caught up in what she was doing that she forgot to focus on Jesus. Let me stop right there. How many times have we been distracted and lost all focus and didn't come to Bible study because somebody called us on the phone? Lord, have mercy. How many times have we been distracted by the phone because somebody sent us a text message just right as we was getting ready to say our prayer? But instead of letting the text message go through, we'll flip it over and answer. Nothing but a distraction. Lord, have mercy. Here we go. Desiring others to participate in your distraction can be deadly. This was the problem with Martha. She is not only wanting herself to be busy, but she wanted her sister to be busy. I come to tell you, be careful who pulls you in with some stuff. Be careful who always somewhere trying to pull you in to be a part of their distraction. Because guess what? Just like that can distract other people, they can distract your anointing. My anointing is too powerful to, to be dealing with somebody and their fatal distractions. Lord, have mercy. I can't get no help in here. Here, it says, certainly Jesus commends the kind service to the neighbor many times. If you go back above in Luke 10, you can read about the Good Samaritan. It's funny how this came after he talked about the parable of the Good Samaritan. You know the story. Someone stopped by to help. But let me tell you why I think he put this in. He wanted us to remind us that we cannot help without him helping us. A lot of times we like to focus on it and we like to say we've done everything. We like to put it on there. I got up this morning. My alarm woke me up. But I'm here to tell you that alarm didn't wake you up. If the Lord had to breathe in your lungs, you wouldn't have got up. Lord have mercy. The problem with Martha is not her serving, 
but rather she is worried and distracted. Good God from Zion. Do you realize Martha's distraction and worry left no room for the most important aspect of hospitality, gracious attention to guests. In fact, hmm, somebody gonna catch this on your way home. She breaks the all the breaks the breaks all the rules of hospitality by trying to embarrass her sister in front of the guests. Who was the guest? Check that out. Fatal distraction. Let me stop right there. The devil don't care who he used, when he used. Jesus was right in the presence of them. And what happened? Martha began to show her behind. Have you ever had those family members that want to call you out and want to put you on blast? Lord, have mercy. Mm, and maybe I'm the only one of them family members like that. <laughs> So Mary's own blood began to put her on blast, her own sister. Let me just stop right there. You have to be careful. The enemy will sometimes use your own flesh and blood. The enemy will sometimes use your children in your household. The enemy will sometimes use your spouse. That's why you got to put on the full armor of God. You can't have on half of the outfit and think that you are going to go against the devil and his attacks. Martha's worry and distraction prevent her from being truly in the presence of Jesus and cause a caused her to drive a wedge between her sister and herself and between Jesus and herself. She missed out on the one thing needed for true hospitality. There is no greater hospitality than listening to the guest, and the guest was who? Jesus. So Jesus says that Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from here. Ah, oh, let me stop right there. See, what often happens when you take the better part, I'm going to go here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. People tend to think that you better than anybody. Nah, I'm not better than anybody. I'm not going to hell for you. Mm -hmm. See, the problem is we don't want to stand up. We'll sacrifice our soul because we're worried about the crowd. Mm. Ah. Ooh, mm, my, my God. So when Jesus, he turned to respond to Martha, Jesus' word to Martha may have been seen an invitation, then a rebuke. Let me stop right there. Sometimes when people respond to us, don't always take it as a negative thing. Sometimes they are trying to help us. Sometimes they can see that the train is about to wreck ahead of you, but they're just trying to help you. Here's the problem. We're too busy getting in our feelings. We're too busy talking. They ain't going to tell me what to do. But you might want to listen to them because you don't know what they have experienced. Mm-hmm. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is no need, there is need of only one thing. The one thing needed is for Martha to receive the gracious presence of Jesus, to listen to his words, to know that she is valued, not for what she does or how well she does it, but for who she is and as a child of God. Let me stop right here. Quit looking for validation from people. Validation is for park, and I tell myself all the time, if I live for people compliments, I'll die by their criticisms. <laughs> Let me say that again. If you live by people compliments, you will die by their criticisms. Y'all didn't catch that. I'm going to say it one more time. If you live by people compliments, me, if you always want somebody to tell you, you did a great job. Oh, let me call your name. Oh, you got this or you have that. You will die when they don't say anything. But I come to serve notice. I don't need validation because I've been vindicated by the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Jesus. 
That's the wrong with our society today. Uh, we too busy, caught up and worried about what somebody going to say. We too caught up to worry about somebody stroking our ego. But guess what? I come to tell you, if God, if it's not God's plan, then it will fall through anyway. Because if the Bible says, commit your ways to the what? To the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We living in a society that everybody wants a trophy and everybody wants to be on the scene. Everybody wants to be on the front. If they can't lead the song, they won't come to church. If they can't pray the prayer, they won't pray. If they can't do this, I'm not coming. If they can't have their name announced, but I come to take, that's a distraction. Lord, have mercy. We get caught up in distractions. We get caught up in the limelight. We get caught up in, if it's not my child, I'm not going to clap. Let me tell you, you better clap for all of them. Lord, have mercy. Jesus. We so bad and we get so ignorant in church. If it ain't the right preacher, we won't even say amen behind them. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to tell the truth. I come to serve notice. I refuse because I don't like somebody. I refuse because to allow the devil for me to not like anybody and miss my blessing. Lord, have mercy. Jesus. Uh, I'm working my way through this text. Just hold on. I'm, I'm almost about to take my seat. But let's look at this. Not only was she distracted, but she began to worry Lord, have mercy. Worrying is a sin. You can't serve God who you trust and then worry. Lord, have mercy. Y'all didn't catch that. I'm preaching to myself. Look in Luke, the 12th chapter, the 21st verse, 25th verse. Can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your lifespan? Hmm. Let me say that verse again. Luke 12, chapter, the 25th verse. Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? When I read that scripture, it put me in check. Doing the why are you trying to handle things? If you can't handle it, leave it alone. God will do it. And the thing I had to check myself, because I want to be transparent, I had to learn I will trace him when I can't trust him. I will trust him when I can't trace him. Lord, have mercy. We know that worrying does no good and that much of we worry is about something petty. Yeah, sometimes we can be petty Patrick and petty Patrice. Uh-huh, worried about something, all dealing with all things, causing anxiety, causing frantic. Because we so busy worried and we so busy distracted that we miss the presence of God when he's trying to help us. Mm. So, it goes on to the story. Jesus appreciated what Martha was doing, but all of her activities were good, but they were not of God because she left no time for his presence. I come to tell you tonight, today, let's make a, let's make a time that when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we do, we say our prayers. We say, Lord, I thank you this morning. You woke me up this morning. I even had to check myself and be careful that I don't pick my phone up to look to see what's on Facebook. I know I'm not the only way. Sometimes we'll pick our phone to see what's on Instagram. Who tweeted this? What's on this? But I come to serve notice on myself. Edwina, you better put God first, because that may be the last time you wake up on that morning. My God. Here we go. Both listening and doing, receiving God's word, and serving others are vital to the Christian life, just as inhaling and exhaling or to breathing. Yet often we forget to breathe deeply. Woo! That's a bad distraction when you even forget that you have breathed. That's a bad distraction that you even forgot that you just exhale. That's a bad distraction when you drive to work and you don't even remember passing anything. That's a bad distraction that you can't even remember if you let the garage door up or let it down. It's a bad distraction when you don't know if you have turned the stove on, left the iron on, or even left the baby at the house. 
I come to tell you we need to stop being distracted because in this world of distraction, the enemy has us running around. We're exhausted. The enemy has us so distracted that we've made the pharmaceutical company rich. Lord, have mercy. Some of us are on two and three anxiety pills. Some of us on two and three hypertension pills. Some of us on five diabetic pills. Some of us got more medicine than Walgreens and CVS. Lord, have mercy. Distractions. Tell your neighbor, I will not be distracted. The Bible says, 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I come to tell you, and I'm about to take my seat. Because we are dependent upon God, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. God said, I'll take all your burdens. He said, give it to him and leave it with me. The problem is, Martha was so over anxious and trying to get things done. <laughs> she said that I got to clean up and I got to do this and I got to do this. But I come to tell you, when you leave Jesus out of your plans, when you leave Jesus out of the things that you are doing, when you leave Jesus out of the things that you are supposed to be doing on a daily basis, I stop by to tell you, you leaving room for the enemy. And when the enemy can get in, the enemy will begin to attack your body. The enemy will begin to attack your health. The enemy will begin to attack your family. The enemy will begin to attack your mind. But I come to tell you, I come to tell you that there's a remedy for the fatal distraction. That remedy is he was lifted. He was lifted on a tree. Jesus died for you and me. He was nailed for my anxiety. He was nailed for my burdens. He was nailed for my heartaches. He was nailed for my insecurities. He was nailed for my enemies. He was nailed to the cross. On that tree, he died for you and me. But that's not how the story ends. That's not how You got to go today. Tell your distractions. No more. Goodbye. Whatever it is. Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to help somebody. Whatever it is, leave it at the altar. Leave it at the altar. Leave it at the altar. Wow, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And on that cross, I come to tell you the blood stream, the blood stream. I thank God for the blood. 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 I refuse. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ooh. Jesus. Mm. Let me tell you something. Oh, God. Let me tell you. The devil wants us to have distractions, anxiety. Because if we got anxiety and distractions, we can't focus on him. I refuse. I refuse to keep giving enemy the room to wiggle in. Fatal distractions. Martha was so distracted, she missed Jesus. He was in her presence. How many times have God been in your presence? How many times have you missed the presence of your healing? Because you're distracted on your sickness. How many times have you missed the presence of God and you missed your financial breakthrough? 
You're so distracted by the bills, you don't even realize you had stuck $50 back in your pocketbook. And then we get upset, the Lord, I don't know where the Lord is. He already there. I just refuse. I can no longer allow the enemy to distract me. And here is the sad part. God will be blessing us and we still in our own way. He could be pouring out blessings and blessings. But we in our own way. Lord have mercy. Martha had fatal distractions. Today when you go home, find out what your distractions is. I know that wasn't grammatically correct, but I just need to stress that point. What are your distractions? We'll, you know what? I said this the other night on Bible study. We'll give everybody else time except God. I'm guilty. And then when the enemy comes, we look like, God, where are you? I heard God tell me one time, he said, you put everything else before me. I need to just check you for a minute. What if God left us the way we leave him sometimes? Oh, God. Fatal distractions. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.